Hey everyone, today I'm going to start our mini-series on learning. Before we can get into that, however, I need to get into behaviorism, and that's what these next few videos will be covering. This will be a very technical video, but it'll be pretty informative as well. To start the series out, we're going to look at operant conditioning, which is a type of learning that is controlled by the consequences. I'd like to define learning as a relatively permanent change in behavior as a result of experience. It's easier to illustrate this point with animals. So say we have a mouse in a cage with a lever that dispenses food, and we want the mouse to learn to press the lever. So how will we start? Well first we need to cover reinforcement and punishment. A reinforcement is anything that increases the frequency of a behavior, and a punishment is anything that decreases the frequency of a behavior. But then you also have positive and negative reinforcements and punishments. A positive reinforcement is a stimulus that is given to increase a behavior. So if a mom gives her kid candy after he does something nice, it would increase the frequency of that behavior, i.e. him doing something nice. A negative reinforcement is when an aversive stimuli is taken away. Now this is not the same thing as a punishment. An example of a negative reinforcement would be the button of your alarm clock. The alarm clock is a stimulus that makes you uncomfortable, and you make that annoyance go away by pressing the button thus reinforcing the behavior of pressing the button. So you have reinforcements which increases behavior, but a positive reinforcement adds something to increase the behavior, and the negative reinforcement takes away something painful to increase the behavior. Punishments are aimed at decreasing a behavior. A positive punishment is a punishment that adds an aversive stimulus to prevent the behavior again. This is a common one, so a parent spanks their child, or after eating spoiled food you get sick. A negative punishment is a punishment that takes away a pleasurable stimulus. So a kid might act out and you could take away his games or time with friends. In both cases, an enjoyable activity is removed. Alright, so a punishment decreases a behavior. But a positive punishment does so by adding something unenjoyable. And a negative punishment does so by taking away something enjoyable. So let's translate all of these to our mouse. Well, we could give him food when he's close to the lever. That's a positive reinforcement. Or we could shock him if he moves away from the lever. That's positive punishment. We could reduce the time he gets to spend with other mice outside of the cage until he gets close. A negative punishment. Or if we had a loud noise playing, we could turn it off when he gets close to the lever. A negative reinforcement. Let's just keep it simple by giving him food when he presses the lever. Should we only do it once? This is where reinforcement schedules are important. Reinforcement schedules are just what they sound like. Scheduling when the behavior gets rewarded. There are several kinds of schedules. First, you have continuous schedules. So every time the behavior is produced, you give the reinforcement. So every time the mouse presses a lever, he gets food. Then you have a series of four intermittent schedules. This can be a bit confusing, so to help, ratio can be thought of as a number of responses, and interval as a period of time. Fix is best thought of as every and variable can be best thought of as on average. The fixed ratio schedule is when you reinforce the behavior after a specified number of responses. For example, for every five times the lever is pressed, it gets one pellet of food. There's also the fixed interval schedule, which is when the behavior is reinforced after a fixed period of time. So say the time is 2 minutes. Before 2 minutes, the behavior will not be reinforced no matter how many times the mouse presses it. It is only after the 2 minutes that the mouse gets reinforced. Note that this doesn't mean that it will get rewarded after 2 minutes, but only if it does behavior after the 2 minutes has passed. The variable ratio schedule is when the reinforcement varies but averages on the number of responses. So it may not give a reinforcement every 5 presses of the lever, but after you collect the data, it will have averaged out to about every 5 presses. The variable interval schedule is when the reinforcement varies but averages on a period of time. It may not give a reinforcement every 2 minutes, but will average out to every 2 minutes. So we use positive reinforcement by giving the mouse food, and we are using continuous scheduling to give him food every time he presses the lever. Great, we taught him how to press the lever consistently. Then you get the idea, maybe I won't have to reinforce him anymore and he'll still press the lever. So then you stop the reinforcement. What happens next surprises you. The mouse presses the lever repeatedly more often and faster than what you've ever observed. Over the course of that day you notice that the mouse presses the lever in these bursts and then stops and then presses in bursts again. But you come in the next day and you find that he doesn't press the lever at all. What happened? 
Well, you successfully extinguish the behavior. Extinction is when a previously reinforced behavior is no longer reinforced, causing the behavior to stop. You may ask, I stopped reinforcing it yesterday and the mouse had a new vigor about pressing the lever. Why did it stop now? Well, extinction bursts are those bursts that occur after the behavior has stopped being reinforced, and they're a pretty common phenomenon. This burst can be explained through evolutionary psychology. In the wild, it would be more advantageous for the mouse to be persistent and try again than the one that gives up easily, because there could still be a chance that the behavior could yield reinforcing consequences. However, not every extinction burst will lead to extinction. There are cases when the opposite is true, namely in humans. It's been suggested that those with PTSD and phobias have failed to extinguish behaviors or reactions to situations. So after learning this, you go back to the continuous reinforcement schedule, and the mouse relearns his behavior. Good job! Today I covered operant conditioning. We looked at positive and negative punishments and reinforcements, as well as reinforcement schedules. Next time I'll cover classical conditioning. Like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.